this up on you. You can feel your past right there on your shoulder. But just the fact that it is literally behind you, keep your butt going. Keep you keep moving. Don't you stop. You be ye steadfast, unmovable, and abounding in the work of the Lord. Find something when it talks about the work of the Lord that you are good at. It doesn't matter whether it's going to visit the elderly, whatever you are good at. Whether it, it may be singing, get on live and just sing and let people hear you bless the Lord, oh my soul, with your voice. Whatever it is that you are good at that is abounding in the work of the Lord, then that's what you need to stick to. Stop giving yourself permission and allowing yourself to get back into all these dark places because you're not doing what it is that you need to do. It doesn't matter if you don't pray like I pray. I had to build up to this prayer life. I did not just get to this prayer life that I have. I had to build up to it. And there was a whole year that God was silent from me because of some disobedient stuff that I did. And I did not quit. My prayer life started out. What y'all get now did not start like this. When I first did the prayer life, this what you hear me doing this morning, it was probably five minutes. And three of them minutes was me taking prayer requests. And that's just how long it lasted. Oh, God, I thank you for watching. Oh, well, God, be with us today. Amen. And I was out of there because I was nervous. But if you build yourself up, God, help me. If you build yourself up, I love you, dude. If you build yourself up on your most holy faith, then things, and always abound, then things are going to get better. It is going to intensify. Set a time limit for yourself. Don't be ashamed of it. Set a time limit. Now, listen, I'm going to pray three minutes today, and then the next day, I'm going to do three minutes and 15 seconds, and then the next day, I'm going to do three minutes and 30 seconds, but if you would just make sure that if you would journal the things that require prayer, you will find yourself praying all day if you don't watch it. If you mess around and start writing down prayer requests, I promise you, before you know it, you will look up, you don't spend some extensive time, because by the time you get through talking to God about running, Bobby, Ricky, and Mike, you will be done spent some time in prayer. By the time you get through talking to him about he said and she said, you will be done spent some show enough extensive time in prayer. By the time you get through talking to him about what he needs to deliver you from and bring you out of, now, Lord, you know I need you to help me with this right here. Why? Because this attitude of mine, woo, Jesus Christ, I need you to help me. I'm going to need the blood, Lord, to be poured on me at a double dose today because of what I got to go through, who I got to encounter today. If you would just write down those things before you know it, you will be to spend more time in prayer than you could imagine. And then that's abounding in the work of the Lord. And it will always show you what you need to do. There is no way that you could pray about something and not be an assistance to it. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. A lot of times we just want to pray about stuff but don't want to help it. What we'll say, we'll know that somebody has got a need. They they suffering. They got a financial need. Let's just say somebody done passed away and they ain't got no insurance. Now we all know that we should have insurance. If you ain't got none, get you some. We all know that we should have life insurance, but unfortunately, there are some people that just don't do it. They don't do it, and it leaves the burden on those of us that are behind to have to take care of it. It's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It is just what happens. And so because of that, what we'll do is, is we'll hear about a family that does not have any insurance, right? We will hear about them not having any insurance, and they are in a deficit, you know, in a situation as to where they're having to come up with it. I'm going to use this as an example. We've had two family members to pass with no insurance, but God came through. Didn't have to beg. Thank you, Father, for coming through, but I believe all of that is because of seeds. All of that is because of seeds that have been sown into the ground because they'll bring forth a harvest when you need it. Okay, so so, therefore, we'll know that these people are in need of something. And we were literally, well, I'm praying for them. I'm praying that they, uh, you know, be a, you, girl, you, you know they need $7,000 uh, for the funeral. 
Well, honey, I'm praying for him that the Lord will send the seven thousand dollars for him. Why you ain't give five? Huh? Why you didn't give five? Why? Why? Why you couldn't give five? Five would have put him at needing six thousand nine hundred ninety-five. Why you didn't give five? See, whatever you spend time in prayer about, you gonna help. I, that's why. I, I done told y'all about me now. I, I, done, I, done, I done told y'all. Y'all see me? I get the point in that finger. I done told y'all about me. That's why I don't buy folk. That's why I, 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 I'm telling you now, love is what it does. That's why I don't be studying people. People be in your face and all. They don't really care for real. Love is what it does. It's what it does. Yeah, I'm, I'm praying for them. You know them people got a need. You talking about you praying for them. You ought to be shamed. I'm praying for them. Prayer causes you to move. Do y'all not understand? Go read your Bible. Jesus went into places of prayer and every time he came out, he did something for somebody too. Okay! Okay! Every time he came out, he did something for somebody. Now, talk about it. Every time he came out of prayer, he did something for y'all. Okay, see, Lord, look at that, see. See, I, sh I knew I should have turned my fan on. It's getting hot in here. Every time he came out of prayer, he did something for somebody. When last time you did something for somebody, and I ain't talking about your family need. Because a lot of y'all got it twisted. You think because you paid your daughter light bill. You think because you helped your son get the tires fixed on that car, whatever you call that seed. No, go read your Bible. What have you done for somebody outside of your loins? How have you helped somebody outside of your loins? Hmm? Because that's when love is really being exemplified. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying to you this morning, do you? Okay, so let me show you then. I will. I'm glad you curious enough to want to know. Okay, so while I was in sin, I was literally the devil's advocate. I was literally the devil's child. The seed of Chucky. Mm -hmm. That's what I was. But the Bible says, while I was yet a sinner, Christ died for me. See, what have you done for somebody that hadn't come out your loins? Y'all, I told y'all. Y'all don't let me get saved for real. Uh-huh. I'm going to heaven. Okay. What have you done for somebody outside of your loins? Oh, ooh, ooh, you probably get mad. But y'all know I don't care, right? You know I don't. What have you done for somebody outside of your loins? Hmm? See, what, 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 yeah, I bet I, I, I could, I, I can't even get into all of this like I want to with, with y'all because y'all wouldn't even be ready. For me to have to tell you the truth about some stuff. Because I've had to come to the realization about some things. <laughs> I've had to come to the realization about some things and about some people. <laughs> I'm telling you. I've had to come to the realization about some things and about some people. And guess what? When it when when the reality came, I ain't fight it. Not, not one time did I fight it. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that, that is what that is. That's exactly what that is. Yes, that is. That's a snake in the grass. Yes, that is what that, oh, that's a nasty joker right there. Oh yeah, yeah, that is what it is. It is what it is. I'm telling you, remind you again, continue on. Continue on. I'm telling you, I'm saying it to you again. What have you done? For somebody outside of your loins. What have you done for somebody outside of your household? Hmm? And I ain't even talking about the stuff that you done done to try to slit God with. Because you know we'll try to slit God too, right? You know a lot of us give. We don't literally give tithes and offerings and all because of the fact that we so committed to God. But we give them because of what's been taught to us that we're going to be cursed, and which we will. 
But that is why we give it because we literally trying to manipulate God, trying to slick God. It ain't I give this because I love you and I give this because I'm following the principle and I love your principles. It's because I don't want to be cursed because I don't want my image to be tarnished. I, I want God to make sure that I, I got what I need and that I, I'm, I'm taken care of. So I'm going to give it because of that. Well, do you know that that is a form of manipulation? Do you know that that is a form of deception, literally trying to deceive God? Are you aware of that? See, these are truths. Now, I told y'all winning in life. I told y'all I'm eating this up all the month of August. If you desire to learn to win in life and you think you can handle the pressure of having to hear the truth about yourself, then grab my coattail for this month. Grab my coattail. Trim is about to graduate to another year old this month. This month, the end of this month, the 31st of this month, we'll celebrate seven years. Check this out. Seven is the number of completion and maturity. Uh-huh. I am, I am literally, literally dealing with winning in life to bring it to a place of completion and maturity. So that eight, which is the new beginning, we can walk in the newness of some things that are set for us. So if you really want to learn to win in life and not be shucking and jiving and and not be being manipulative and being slick concerning stuff, then follow me this month. Follow me all this month. Catch the lives. Catch me on Sundays on live. Come in the building if you ain't got nothing going on and catch what's happening. It's a lot of wisdom and you're going to have to be able to digest it now. I'm going to say that to you. If you one of them religious folk and you just want the preacher to say what you want the preacher to say and all that kind of stuff and you're going to be fighting against against what the preachers say, then keep your little old butt where it's at because I'm going to literally have a fit concerning you, all right? I'm just telling you now, and I'm literally liable to call you out on it because I don't want you blocking my flow and literally say, hey, listen, is there a problem? Is there something you and I need to talk about, you know, or what have you because uh, I'm sensing what you're doing and I'm literally trying to teach some people that really want to win in life. I'm talking about people that have been saved for 20 years but still getting their butt kicked every day. They still losing in life. They still failing in areas. They still haven't seen the manifestations of the goodness or the greatness in God in their life. Those are the people that I'm trying to get at to help to win in life. I'm talking about the people that I can teach how you may not be a millionaire at the moment but baby you good where you are. You ain't having to spend a day concerned and worrying about what's going to happen. You're not spending a moment thinking about what you're going to eat, what you shall wear, and all because your Heavenly Father knows that you are in need of these things and takes care of these things. I'm talking about the people that want to learn integrity, the people that want to learn to walk in character, the people that want to have a real, genuine relationship with God. And I'm not talking about being perfect, but I'm talking about being purpose. Those people right there, those those are the people that for the month of August, if that's you, then I would encourage you to get in behind your girl. If you got a pastor, talk to them about it uh, um, before you come and deal with it. And I'll make sure that they good because you might have a pastor that don't live and don't win in life. So they're going to be a little offended at the fact of you wanting to win in life. So uh, you're going to need to work all that out. I can't work it out for you. But I'm going to put it out here to make it, make it available for people that want to win in life. You want to see why? How is it that you could go through what you go through, Delphine, and still come out? Baby, it's because I be ye steadfast, unmovable, and I abound in the work of the Lord to the best of my ability. And if I falter along the way, baby, I get out of it so quick. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus, I get out of it so quick because I don't want to run this race in vain. God, help me today. I don't want to run this race woo, in vain. God, I feel that this morning. I don't want to run this race in vain. This race in vain. Woo, Jesus. Lord, I'm running. Trying to make a hundred. Because 99 and a half 
won't do. Good God Almighty, Lord, I'm running, trying to make a hundred, because 99 and a half won't do. I don't.